Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I am Vishal Dahiya and this week we will take a look at indigenous radar systems. Radars are detection systems which use radio waves to identify and determine the range, velocity and angle of an object. The origin of a radar goes back to 1930s. Since then, there has been significant technological advancements making them highly sophisticated and powerful. In India, DRDO and its laboratory, Electronics and Radar Development Establishment is the agency which is responsible for design and development of all kind of radars. Now, DRDO has equipped Indian Armed Forces with different types of radars over the years, which include uh, Indian Doppler radar, that is Indra series of uh, 2D radars for Army and Air Force, uh, 3D surveillance radars, 3D tactical control radars, weapons locating radar, synthetic aperture radars, etc. So how has the indigenous capability of the RDO in radar systems evolved over the years and what are the challenges and way forward in this aspect? For more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests in the studio today. Let me first introduce these guests to you, beginning with the, Mr. Father Dr. V.K. Saraswat, former chairman of DRDO, somebody who's been at the helm of affairs there. We have uh, with us uh, Lieutenant General V.K. Saxena, the distinguished fellow from VIF, and we also have with us uh, Mr. Ajay Lele, research fellow from IDSA. Welcome, all of you gentlemen, to Rajya Sabha TV studios, and let me begin with you, Dr. Saraswat, to try and explain to our viewers, first of all, uh, though I mentioned as to what exactly radar system is, but a bit in detail as to how does radar systems work and, uh, you know, why are they significant? As you explained, radar acronym, basically is a radar detection and ranging system. It's an acronym which is basically using the microwaves for measurement of range, velocity and angles of a particular object. Where is that object located? So when you transmit radio waves or the microwaves, then they travel at a speed of light and strike the object. So they take a certain time to reach there. And after it strikes that particular object, it returns, it reflects back. Mm -hmm. It takes certain time to come back. The time differential gives you the distance covered because it is traveling at the speed of the light. Okay. That's a very simple method. The method of measurement of uh, velocity is basically when you are transmitting a microwave, you are transmitting with a particular frequency. As it comes back after reflection, there is a shift in the frequency because of the velocity of the target at which the target is moving. Mm -hmm. So that is the Doppler it is causing. So the shift in the frequency actually is responsible for the measurement of velocity. By how much amount the shift has taken place is a direct indication of the Doppler which is equivalent to the velocity what we are having. Okay. So this is the principle on which it works. Angle is basically measured at which the angle you are practically hitting the microwave at a particular angle with respect to the surface of the earth. Surface of the earth is taken as planar for the all practical purposes and uh, then as it comes back you are able to get the angle from there. So this is how the three measurements are done. Okay. Uh, let me bring, uh, you know, uh, General Saxena and uh, Mr. Lele here as well on the utilization of radar systems because all of us know radar systems are an integral part of uh, the armed forces uh, world over. So General Saxena, how are radar systems significant and important for armed forces? What is its on-field, uh, on-ground utilization? How does it work? Sir, as Dr. Saraswat <coughs> gave the initial uh, introduction, radar systems are the electronic eyes and ears of weapon systems. Our human eyes are restricted to certain vision and vision has got certain uh, limitations of range, altitude and our capability to see something, visualize something. Mm -hmm. Also, our eyes are restricted to fair weather vision. We cannot see in night or others. Radar is one equipment which enables a system, a weapon, an equipment to be able to <coughs> see at a long distance. Okay. During day, during night, during bad weather, during hail, rain, storm, anything. Also, also, it has got a capability to see multiple objects at the same time. For example, if you take the uh, radar, central acquisition radar of a guy weapon system, it can see at any one time 150 targets and can track 67 of them at any one time. Mm -hmm. Now our eyes can possibly see two, three of them and can keep a watch on one or two. Basically enhances the capability yeah. of the weapon system. Tremendous. 
a weapon system which has got a range of, let's say, sir is sitting here, he's the father of Indian ballistic missile defense system. The radar in the Indian ballistic missile system has got, which looks far than wide, the swordfish radar. Mm -hmm. It's a radar with early warning radar. You know the range of radar, 600 kilometers. I have myself seen that radar sitting on that radar. You could even see the elements in space. You could see the satellite. That is the type of range, reach, accuracy which a radar system brings, which is much more. Than, it's an enabler. Mm -hmm. It's an enabler. Also, it gives the capability to a defender, to a user, to use that information to launch weapons against incoming. Okay, uh, Mr. Lele, from uh, the uh, Indian Air Force's perspective as well, and obviously from uh, you know Indian Navy and other forces, armed forces, uh, General Saxena has uh, pointed out how it is used. <laughs> but from your viewpoint as to how significant it is in the conventional warfare as well as with the developing technology, you know, with the kind of technology which we are developing and the space age which we are talking about, how does it play important? I think if you really look at radar, from a point of view of armed forces, all the three services has got tremendous amount of utility. Uh, Indian Army has got a utility, Indian Navy has got a utility, Indian Air Force has got a utility. Now you got to root at radar from different perspectives. One perspective to look at radar is it is allowing you to look at a distance. Mm -hmm. Then there are smaller radars also, which are allowing you certain other types of functions. Then there are very big radars which can go into a deep space also. Like ISRO was having, is having a radar system which can communicate with Moon and Mars where our satellites are there. Uh, so there are radars which are of various ranges, various qualities and various capabilities. Uh, there is a radar which is allowing an aircraft to land on the runway. Okay. Because the air traffic control is having certain amount of capability associated with radar. At the same time, the aircrafts also have got radars. Uh, so one has to look at radars based on the utility point of view. As far as your flying is concerned, you got radars on board of an aircraft which can allow you to track a target, lock on to a target also. So this is one form of a radar. Mm -hmm. Other form of a radar is that you got a primary radar which is allowing the air traffic control system to see a target or to see an aircraft at a certain arena. Mm -hmm. But more closer, you call that as a secondary radar, where you got a transmitter on board of an aircraft which allows you to again give the exact position. So you got to have look at a radar from all these three perspectives. Okay. Other element which is associated is a missile defense system. As far as Air Force is concerned, your entire air defense system is based on radars. So as we grow further, uh, we can discuss these things. Too. Okay. Okay. So so these are quite integral, uh, you know, elements, important ones as well. Dr. Saraswat, I mentioned a three, four different type of radars uh, in my uh, initial comments, but. Uh, if we look at DRDO's journey and the evolution as far as radar systems is concerned, how would you uh, categorize different kind of radars designed and developed by DRDO and how we have evolved over the years in terms of our own indigenous capability? I think we are coming a long way from the early days of Indira radars, which were the 70s radars which were developed, which are highly, uh, they used to have what is called a, a integral transmitter and a receiver and a dish, large parabolic surfaces and then rotating uh, systems. They were the Indra radars which were there. It took quite some time for us to develop those radars and bring it and give it to the Air Force. Then came the battlefield surveillance radars. Mm -hmm. That is basically if the Army's requirement was to uh, track the moving objects on the, on the, on the ground the you know the the troops the vehicles and things like that so we, we developed the battlefield surveillance radars mm -hmm. then came the requirement of a weapon locating radar that is how the guns are firing from the enemy side you should be able to spot where is the gun so we developed the weapon locating radar and these were all developed and supplied to the various armed forces then came the requirement from the air force for detecting the targets flying objects like aircrafts or the uavs or things like that so then we started developing the what we call the AD radars, mm -hmm. and the, the AD radars were basically the, what you call the 3D radars, which gives you the velocity, the, they give you the position and the angle, all the three dimensions they give you. So we supplied a fairly good number of radars of uh, air defense capabilities for the both for the surveillance purpose as well as for the tracking purpose. And these radars were uh, put on the vehicles. These were put on the static conditions and things like that. Then came the era of what is called the phased array radars. 
and Akash, as General Saxena was mentioning, was the first radar where we used the passive phase array for doing the detection of multiple targets flying at the um, in, in the air space. Mm -hmm. Because the idea was to engage more than few aircrafts, four to five to sixteen aircraft at the same time using the surface-to-air missile Akash. Mm -hmm. So we developed first time indigenously using the indigenous technologies from IIT uh, Delhi and also our own electronics research laboratory and made a first time passive phase the radar. Mm -hmm. And that was a major breakthrough which took place. Okay. And at that point in time also we had a central acquisition radar which we gave it to Air Force for acquiring multiple targets. Mm -hmm. Then came what we call as the air defense system program of the country, the ballistic missile defense program of the country. That demanded a separate class of systems that you have to detect very small radio cross-section targets like ballistic missiles coming at very high speed from high altitudes. You should be able to detect at long distances. For that we developed and of course it was a joint development with Israel at that point in time, the swordfish which he mentioned. We developed a 600 kilometers active phase array radar. Mm -hmm. And the effect of all this is today we have three of them manufactured in our own country. Mm -hmm. Then the entire production of these systems today is not only in LRD, but there's about half a dozen uh, associated industry in the country who are manufacturing the subsystems like the TR modules, the transmitters, the signal processing units and the cooling systems because they are not only electrical, they are highly electromechanical systems as on today's radars. Okay. And now we have built a radar for NTRO which is positioned on the ship detecting the coming incoming ballistic missiles and so on. So the journey has been very, very important, but the important part is more than about 25 to 30 kinds of radars ALRDE has been able to develop today mm -hmm. and supply to the Indian Armed Forces, both Navy, Air Force and Army. And uh, that has been a major achievement, including development of the industrial infrastructure in the country to support this kind of adventure. Okay, so, so uh, you know, majestic uh, achievement out there, more than two dozen kinds of radars and evolving an ecosystem as well uh, to support this uh, entire setup. Jan Saxena, 